After whole preparation, our next topic is safe storage and securing. Once the whole preparation is done, now the cargo has to be safely stored on board and secured. Okay, so for safe storage and securing, why we are doing the safe storage and securing? For the safe carriage of the cargo. So we need to safely carry the cargo from place A to place B. Okay, that is what is our main function. So in order to safely store the cargo and secure it, we need to refer various codes. Okay. So these are the codes that you need to refer. First and foremost is the cargo securing manual. The cargo securing manual as the name suggests, it is a manual for what? For the cargo securing arrangements. What all cargo securing arrangements are required for that particular type of cargo. What are lashing gear systems you will be requiring. Okay, these are things will be given, given under the cargo securing manual. Then you have code of safe working practices. The code of safe working practices as the name suggests, it will give you the guidelines of the safe working practices that you need to follow on board ship. Okay, uh, the personal protective equipments that you need to wear when you are uh, working with such type of cargoes. Then you have the code of safe practice for cargo storage and securing. Now this code is also similar to your uh, cargo securing manual. It will also give the guidelines on securing arrangements. Then comes grain code. Grain code will give you guidelines on storage uh, requirements for gr grain when you are loading grain on board then the IMDG code IMDG code is for dangerous goods so IMDG code will give you guidelines for suppose segregation is required for if you have dangerous goods on board what are the segregations that are required the markings labeling the packaging material so those all things will get under the IMDG code INSBC code is for bulk ca cargos so all the guidelines for bulk cargos will get under the IMSBC code IBC code is for bulk chemicals. When you are loading chemicals in bulk, that, that is when you have to refer to the IBC code. P and A manual. Now procedures and arrangements manual is a manual that will help you. It will provide you the procedures and the arrangements which are present on board. The procedures for what? For the oil tankers and chemical tankers. This manual is present usually for the oil tankers and chemical tankers. It will give you the procedures to be followed and the arrangements which are present on board. Okay. Then you have the timber code. Now, timber code is when you are loading timber cargo. That is when you have to refer the timber code for the same safe storage and uh, securing means. Then comes the polar code. Polar code in case your ship is transiting a polar region. Okay, then this is the code that you need to refer. As such, various other codes are also present that you need to uh, refer accordingly. Okay, that's why etc is present. And what do you get from these codes? What these codes will give you is it presents the guidelines, the guidelines, the standard procedures and practices that needs to be followed. Okay, the regulations and requirements which have to be met under these codes for those particular cargoes, the safety, legal and commercial aspects. Now, when I talk about safety aspect, whenever you are doing storage and securing safety aspect means what safety of men, safety of cargo, safety of the ship and safety of the environment all the four points needs to be met okay so that is the safety as aspect that needs to be covered when you are doing the storage and securing arrangements the legal aspect when i talk about the legal aspect the documentation which is required suppose if it is a dangerous goods suppose i am dg it is a dangerous goods at that time the shipper's declaration needs to be presented to you the msda sheet needs to be presented to you so those all things will come under the legal aspect okay when I talk about the commercial aspect, the commercial aspect, the storage has to be as such that maximum revenue can be generated, right? So the loan line convention is taken into account when we uh, we are doing storage and securing. So commercial aspect needs to be met according to your load line. Uh, so in case the cargo is a high density cargo or is it, it is a measurement cargo that is as per the volume. Okay. If it is a light cargo, then as per the volume, you'll be charging the freight. If it is a deadweight cargo, as per the density, you'll be charging the freight. So that is the commercial aspect. So these all aspects needs to be met. So this is all about your safe storage and securing means. So now few important things to be checked for safe storage and securing. They are as follows. First and foremost is the lashing gear. Now you need to check the lashing gear, which is present on board. The condition of these lashing gears, the type of these lashing gears, uh, then you need to check for condition. You have to check the physical condition as well as uh, no residues of the previous cargo have to be present on these lashing gears. Okay, so check for these things. Check for the maintenance. These lashing gears have to be in adequate working order and have to be in sufficient quantity. So these things you have to check before 
loading itself. Okay, once because you need to know how, what is the quantity of lashing gear that you require for that particular type of cargo. That particular type of lashing gear is required as per the codes. Okay, so sufficient quantity has to be present on board. So these things you have to check under the lashing gear. Then comes dunnages. Now dunnages are usually wood, uh, wooden planks. Okay, these wooden planks are generally of these this this is the standard di dimension for it. The length should be uh, not less than 150 mm. The width 25 mm to 150 mm, and the depth is of 50 mm. It can be greater than this also. Now when your uh, wooden plank is of larger thickness, these dunnages are called bearers. Okay, this is another important term. Then you have now dunnages used for what? Dunnages used for separation. Separation of the cargo so that contamination doesn't take place. This is the primary function of dunnage. Second function is it protects the cargo from ship sweat. Because if the cargo comes in contact with the ship sweat, it will get damaged. So the dunnage protects the cargo from ship sweat as well as it keeps the cargo separated so that contamination doesn't take place. Coming to separations, separations, there are various methods of keeping the cargo separate from one another so that contamination doesn't take place. So what are the few methods? One is with the help of dunnage as we have discussed. Second is you can use uh, gunny bags, you can use uh, plastic sheets or tarpaulins. Then uh, you can also uh, separate the cargo uh, by a hold or a compartment or by decks or bulkheads. All methods you can use to separate the cargo from one another. Okay. Why we are doing this? For example, like uh, if we don't want the cargo to to get contaminated hence we are separating them now whatever method you are using has to be in accordance with the codes okay so the codes will have the guidelines given under them you just need to follow those guidelines then comes contamination contamination is what when one, two cargos are loaded together okay one of the properties of one cargo affects the other cargo this should not take place this is called contamination the other cargo is affected by uh, the cargo it is loaded with. So this is contamination. We don't want this to occur. Hence, guidelines are given under the codes so that separation can be made. Okay. So contamination for one thing is to avoid contamination, check for the residues of the previous cargo. Accordingly, do the whole preparation. What was the previous cargo? For example, if the previous cargo you carried was sugar, okay, and the next cargo you are going to carry is cement. So whole preparation is a must. You need to do whole cleaning, okay, so that no traces of previous cargo is left. Because if any residue of sugar is left, okay, and then cement, you are loading cement upon that, it will result in binding, okay, and the, it will destroy the cargo. So this is what we don't want uh, this, this to occur. Hence, proper, uh, properly follow the codes and prepare the hold in the, such a way that contamination doesn't occur. Check the bilges. Bridges have to be cleaned. No residue of the previous cargo ha have to has to be present. Okay. Then uh, further, uh, like two cargos, you know that coffee and meat they do don't go hand in hand. Okay. So you don't store store the coffee with meat. So these all separations are there. They are given under the codes. You need to just follow them. Then comes theft and pilferage. Theft and pilferage of the cargo. Now the cargo is cargo needs to be protected from theft and pilferage. For this, like if the car, if it is a very high valuable cargo and you don't want, you need to uh, restrict the access to it, right? So for example, if a cargo comes in a container, such type of cargo, if it comes in a container, you have to stack the containers in such a way that the openings are faced inwards so that during the carriage of the cargo, nobody can access such containers. Okay. They cannot be opened during the voyage. So one is by this method. You can secure it from theft and pilferage. Secondly, what you can do if it is a very high, high valuable cargo, for example, diamonds or you have a gold brick, then you can keep them in special lockers. Okay. You can get special lockers on board and keep, keep such type of cargo in lockers, the key of which can be kept with the master. Then what else you can do to avoid theft and pilferage, uh, avoid working by night, work only during daytime. Okay have sufficient watch, have an extra watchman if possible, then uh, mark your restrict, uh, restricted access areas, okay, restricted access areas to be marked, once the loading is completed, okay, 
batten down the hatches and make sure that the excess ways are closed okay these things you need to check so that theft and pilferage can be avoided if you are working by night that uh, during that time you need to have adequate lighting uh, lighting system that has to be present you know sufficient light is present sufficient uh, watch keepers are there okay additional watchman if possible and uh, your security systems which are present on board if you have cctv well uh, it should be in good working order okay so these things can be uh, checked to avoid theft and pilferage so these are few important things to be checked for the safe storage and securing and for the safe carriage of the cargo